Well, hello there, my fellow rushers. How are you doing today? King Rexy here. And today we have an interesting hero design created by the one and only, the Dark Lord himself, Vesnian, and teammate Trevorian, the Holy Dark Slayer. Interesting concept, not gonna lie. A Dark Knight and a, and a Paladin in one. That's interesting. Now, he is made for Kingdom Rush Vengeance, as you could have, uh, as you could have suggested, as you could see. Now, he also added a little bit of lore, so you can pause the video and read it if you want, but that's only if you want to, of course. I already read through it, and it's uh, quite an interesting story. Small, short, but nice. So, without any further ado, let's get to the statistics. As you can see, here's a nice little reference image. He's gonna look... His, his appearance is similar to the Dark Knights at Tier 4 from Kingdom Hearts Vengeance. Pretty fitting. So, here we go with the statistics. 1400 HP. That is already an insane amount of HP. Let's leave it at that. 1400 HP, that's more than literally any hero in existence. That's 50% more HP than Jigo. That's 50% more HP than Gro. That's pretty much more than any any hero ever. So he deals between 30 to 110 di damage. I would assume physical damage because he doesn't specify. And great physical armor, 95%. So yeah. If, you, if he's facing off uh, enemies that do physical damage, he's virtually unkillable. 95% is just... A through the roof insane amount of armor. If you remember the Dark Slayers from the original Kingdom Rush and trying to take them down with only barracks, you know how unkillable these guys are, so imagine that as a hero, <laughs> pretty much. Now, even though he didn't specify the attack speed or the movement speed, he, DM he DM'd them to me, so the actual attack speed is one second and the movement speed is slow. So I would assume he doesn't move very fast, which, you know, it's fine. Kingdom Rush Vengeance, in the Kingdom Rush Vengeance, most enemies are slow anyway, so having a slow mobility is not the, en the end of the world. And as far as his average damage goes, it's about 70. 70 damage per second, on average. That's pretty solid. So, let's check out his abilities. He has this uh, innate ability, or passive ability. Thorns deal 20% damage back to enemies. So, yeah, I would assume this works like Ulrich's uh, Thorn armor, where whenever an enemy damages him, he reflects some of the damage back. And 20%, it, it, even though it may not seem like a big number, it is, it is still a difference. You know, it's a nice way to do damage passively, just by uh, having enemies attack you. Now, I'm not quite sure if it works only in melee mode, or if, if it works against ranged attacks as well, but I'm pretty sure it only works in melee combat. Moving on to healing light ability. Heals 25% HP instantly. Well, 60 seconds cooldown. Well, that's pretty broken, and no, I mean, it. it alright, maybe it isn't broken. Like, 25% of his HP, that's uh, already a pretty huge chunk. Because, you know, he has a total of 1400 HP, so 25% is still a, a large amount of regeneration, just like that. However, the cooldown is 60 seconds. And for 60 seconds, a lot of things can happen. But chances are, you're probably not gonna need this ability all that much. But I guess if you're, like, somehow on very low health, this could save you. But, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know about it. It could be it could be broken, but I don't think it is. Mostly because it has a very long cooldown. I think that kind of balances out the ability. Moving on to Divine Protection ability. Increases all Dark Knight's magic resistance to high. All Dark Knight's? So, if it's all Dark Knight's, is the effect global? Or is it like uh, an aura? Because it says all Dark Knight's, I would assume it is global for any Dark Knight. So it doesn't matter if he's close or far away from them. He's gonna affect them. And that's pretty dope. Increasing their magic resistance to high, that means that they have 70% armor and whopping 70% magic resistance. So... They're pretty much uh, super tanks at this point. Not only are they good for uh, enemies that do physical damage, but now they're only, but, but now they're also great for magic dealing enemies. Like in the Onurian levels, this skill is gonna be very, very strong, at least in my opinion. Moving on to Shield of Darkburg ability, makes Trevor invisible for 10 seconds, but he has 50% less damage when act when activated, and has 10 seconds cooldown. That. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is a typo, or he didn't add up the numbers correctly, because uh, if you read this, pretty much he's gonna be invincible for uh, the whole game, which means that he is unkillable. And I don't think this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm not quite sure if the creator made it intentionally or not. Uh, if he's watching this, then please comment down below, because I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Because uh, having a hero that's, invinci that's invincible, that's a little bit too strong. I mean, even though Phoenix is kind of in kind of unkillable, she still dies for 5 seconds and she doesn't do all that much. You know how this guy can be on the battlefield the whole time. However, uh, well, let's assume that this is intentional when you have a hero that's unkillable. 50% less damage, that means that his DPS is gonna drop uh, 
quite a bit. His average DPS is gonna be only 35 or so, which is pretty low. Well, well where are they? Maybe not low, but about medium-ish. But still, being unkillable, I don't think that's uh, supposed to be the way it is, but I don't know. I, as I said, the creator, the creator has to specify this because I'm not quite sure if it's intentional or not. Moving on, executability. 10% chance of executing an enemy. Wow, just like that. Every So, technically speaking, every 10th attack should be an instant kill. <laughs> wow, that's so broken. I mean, 10% you may be thinking, eh, that's low, but still, 10% chance, that's actually not that bad. I mean, comparing it to stuff like Rexon, where whenever he activates an ability, his uh, Eldritch Ray Blade, he has, like, 3% chance to instant kill an enemy. That's, uh, kind of low. That's, uh, you know, very low, and you rarely see it, if at all. Uh, what else? I remember there was another another tower that had an instant kill in a way. Oh yeah, the assassins. Their sneak attack had a little bit of chance. I think it had like up to six percent chance to instant kill an enemy. But ten percent on a hero—that's something else, man. Ten percent is uh, solid, and it's not like an ability part of an. It's not part of an ability or anything. It's just there. So every ten basic attack, you can pretty much instant kill someone in theory. I mean, sure, you can get like multiple instant kills in a row or so, but you never know. That's pretty broken, in my opinion, In it is. Holy Strike ability. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, strikes enemies with an AoE attack that deals 150 magic damage and has 15 seconds cooldown. Yeah, that's probably the most balanced ability out of, out of everything we've seen so far. And that's nice, 15 seconds cooldown on a pr pretty decent um, AoE attack, magic damage though, so you have to be careful against which enemies you're using, you're using it, but still, it's a nice ability. Moving on to the last one, Ultimate Terror ability. Scares all enemies and makes them walk back for 6 seconds, 30 seconds cooldown. Alright then, that's pretty nice. It's a global effect, I would assume, because it says all enemies. So, every enemy runs away for 6 seconds. Now, it, their movement speed is not increased though when they're running backwards, kind of similar to what Beerusad does with his Fear the Dragon ability. But still, that's uh, pretty, pretty darn good. Scaring away every enemy, that's, uh, that can be pretty helpful, especially if you are on a very short track, even though most maps in Vengeance are not short at all. This still could be uh, kind of nice, you know, just scaring away everybody. If if, some, if something is about to leak and you don't have reinforcements or your hero at the ready, you can just use your ultimate and scare them away from the exit, and that way you have more time to react. I can see how this can be useful. Very, very good ability. And then we also have some uh, fawn facts. And yeah... The, the fun facts, you can you can read them if you want, I already read through them, and they are quite interesting. It's nice, I just say that. And so, what do I think of this hero? In my opinion, he is definitely by far one of the best tanks that I've ever seen in the game. 1400 HP with 95% armor, he's virtually unkillable by enemies that do physical damage because his armor is through the roof. And yeah, his damage is pretty solid, you know, for... um. For a hero of that caliber, that damage is super high. I really like how he deals, uh, deals reflects damage to enemies similar to Auric, although it's a little bit less less strong because Auric reflects, I believe, 65% of the damage dealt, which is way more. But still, that's uh, very good. The Divine Protection is definitely a nice way to, to make him synergize well with the Dark Knights, and it makes sense from a lore perspective, if, if, if you read the lore, that is. The Healing Light, I feel like it's a little bit unnecessary because he's he has already an insane amount of HP. So 25% of his HP every 60 seconds. I mean, it could be nice to save you in some situations, but I doubt that it's gonna be super useful. Unless you're fighting like a boss or something. Uh, the Shield of Darkburg, I'm not quite sure if it's inte if it, that's the way it's supposed to work, but if it is, then uh, yeah, this hero is uh, by far 10 out of 10. Uh, the Executability... Pretty OP in my opinion, 10% chance to insta-kill someone every 10 seconds, that's just uh, insanely good. The Holy Strike, probably the, probably the only balanced ability that I see so far. It's 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 just a regular AoE attack, you know, nothing nothing bad, nothing, wor nothing strong, it's just casual AoE attack. The ultimate, pretty nice I guess, it's a nice way to, in to, to use fear. Instead of scaring enemies in a small AoE, you scare them all, all over the map, which could be could be a, a lifesaver at times. So yeah, I really like this hero design. Vesnan, you did a good job with this hero. This, with this hero, I like it. Although I'm not quite sure if this is uh, super balanced, but hey, uniqueness uh, is over uniqueness over um, balance, I suppose. And the hero is pretty unique. I like the design of him. Well done. And yeah, guys. Well, without out of the way, that's gonna do it for the video. 
Thank you everybody so much for watching. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end. Subscribe if you want to see more of this content in the future. And while you got it, drop a like on the video. It means a lot to me. And I will see you in the next video. Until it comes, that was King Rexy. Over and out.